This week, we're joined by Mark Kramer, director of CX at KLM, to have a convo about CX certifications, KLM's journey through COVID, and championing the customer. Mark, do you want to give a quick intro to the audience? Thank you for having me, first of all. Uh, I am um, Mark Kramer, family man from the Netherlands, working for, for KLM Royal Dutch Airlines for a quarter, quarter of a century, almost. So quite a oh, long wow. time. And uh, last 10 years in, in the market, Marketing, customer experience, uh, customer relations, customer care, customer service. Thanks for the thanks for the intro there, Mark. I want to start the episode off with the sales pitch, the CX pitch, right? Um, and the hypothetical that I'm going to give you is the following. So imagine you're in a position at a company where you know that a CX solution would help optimize the existing processes immensely. However, there's no dedicated budget or buy-in from your actual peers, from your colleagues. So, Mark, in a 30-second elevator pitch, can you tell me why a dedicated CX solution is crucial to our tech stack? Now, give me a second. I'm going to set the timer for 30 seconds. Ready? There's, there's, there's one element which uh, unites us all, and that's the customer. So as soon as we are able to really dive into the, uh, uh, take into account the, the needs of the customer and do that transversely throughout the journey, then we know that the the tech stack or whatever uh, technical solution that is being made is um, also uh, driving the right solution um, for the customer. Well, I love that. You, you actually got right into that 30 second uh, frame as well. <laughs> I'm not sure whether the content really made sense. <laughs> Hey, you no. convince me. I'm convinced. <laughs> what you don't see is in tech stack is normally quite um, transversal. So mm -hmm. technology does not think in silos. People mm -hmm. do. And mm -hmm. that also helps. If we look at really um, the, the IT landscape, mm -hmm. it's normally very complex, very fragmented. Yeah. Uh, and if you, if you look at solutions, uh, they're also quite, sometimes quite silo. But if you really bring the right people together, then you can also see that solution unite. And yeah, that is where um, I, I get a lot of energy from that. We we have looked at different solutions uh, uh, for facilitating the process of the customer. Mm -hmm. That is for us really key. Mm -hmm. um, about two years ago, we made a selection for for uh, a vendor uh, for our call centers for uh, Salesforce Service Cloud. Yeah, they're really having more than. 30 call centers now being transferred to Salesforce Service Cloud. And we really? see that we now can make the connection with our ground crew, with our flight crew, mm -hmm. but also with our social um, social media agents. So yeah. it's, it's really bring the journey together in, in one solution. Interesting. So did you um, did you go through an extensive, I guess, um, RFP process and you know seeing what's out there before then deciding on Salesforce for those particular reasons? So, some processes are also in this uh, great company uh, together with uh, within KLM, but also Air France KLM. Mm -hmm. um, we have a convergent landscape, so yeah. multiple players are involved. Who is taking that decision? And then making sure that, that the, some elements are being taken into account, uh, especially with regard to the customer, yeah. is then driving the, uh, the, yeah, the decision in the right way. But to have... Also, that buy-in from other stakeholders, that they are not the only ones who are deciding, and that a department like customer experience brings in, yeah, um, uh, yeah, these these elements that need to, that need to be taken into account, mm -hmm. is then, um, yeah, that requires quite some convincing. But when it's done, yeah, uh, then you look at it, yeah, some some uh, customer experience, uh, could say technology, mm -hmm. is is driven by um departments who are mostly dr driven by unit cost did you use that to then convince your other peers and colleagues that salesforce was the right decision using some of those elements yes it really was the, mm -hmm. the, the perspective from the customer you know you don't want to share the same information twice you yeah. want to um uh, that the customer is being served whatever problem there is so that there's yeah. immediately in uh, a 360 degree view on the customer mm -hmm. and that we can see that the customer already had contact with social or on board or in the lounge yeah and that was uh, for us um one of the convincing elements uh, to go for salesforce in this in this respect in this specific project 
And that kind of feeds into um, feeds into you and your role within KLM, right? Um, one of the things that stood out from your profile to me is uh, the fact that you mentioned that you act as a missionary for the customer. Could you tell me a little bit more about that? Depends, of course, of the company, but within Air, uh, within KLM, um, uh, customer customer intimacy uh, within airlines is has always been quite a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, some people say, uh, you know, it's more a logistical company, it's a transformation company, it's a commodity. Yeah? Let's, mm. let's, let's face it, you know, yeah. I, I'm, I'm taking the, best, the first airline that can bring me from A to B. Uh, what we found out is that also airlines are treating customers this way. So a lot of, you know, the, of course, the low-cost low carriers were basically saying, okay, we give you the best price, we give you a pretty good product. Mm -hmm. um, Within um, and on some of the carriers, for example, Middle Eastern carriers say we give you the best product and we yeah. give you the best. Now, what we what we believe is if you really put the, the customer at the center, mm -hmm. and, uh, what I'm always saying, compared to um, um, yeah wine, uh, for example, a great <laughs> product. You're you're right. drinking champagne. Right. Uh, that that we said okay if you if you take into account the the local carriers they say we, we buy wine and we, we give the best wine for the for the for the price that is available mm -hmm. um so we we buy you know the, the, the cheaper wine bulk wine yeah. with a pretty good taste and everybody will swallow uh, will drink it and it will be okay yeah product leaded uh, uh companies or airlines they will say okay we buy the barolo wine the best wine that there is Mm -hmm. uh, if you get a, the, the best one, and we say as as KLM, we want to give you your preferred wine, ideally. Uh, so if we are at a wine of your choice, we can, take, can can we take into account your preference? Of course, we cannot. Mm -hmm. uh, we in the in the 2019, we served about uh, 35 million customers uh, who yeah. boarded KLM aircraft. Yeah. We cannot have 35 million. <laughs> choices that we take into account eh? that's not but the more you can do that the more the customer also feel hey this is this company is not is, is taking into account my preferences my um needs so do you maybe have any examples from klm where you've been able to achieve just that uh one of the examples is let's say one-on-one -on -one personalized but we found out that a lot of customers um, uh, have to follow the rhythm of the airline so the moment that they fly and that the airline decides when they drink, uh, eat, sleep. Uh, and we said, okay, for at least our business class passengers, we want to give them that choice. One of the elements is, is that the customer can choose whether he wants to work, eat or sleep at a certain moment. Mm -hmm. And we take that into account. That's one of the main examples. Yeah. Also yeah. On, a, on a broader scope, we see that, um, especially here in society here in the Netherlands, but I think all, all over the world is getting mm -hmm. more aware of the um, sustainability and let's say right. the, the, the challenges that we are all facing. Mm -hmm. uh, KLM already has taken that into account 12 years ago that we started working on our sustainable um, uh, proposition uh, yeah. to uh, buy lighter, to have a, and we also have one, I think, from the 12 years that we started working on this, um, 10 years, the Dow Jones Sustainability Index. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are moving further with that subject. So also understanding that a big group of our customers need to fly for whatever reason, yeah. um, and, and but want to do that responsibly. So only when they mm -hmm. need to, yeah. and also offset their, their uh, CO2 uh, yeah. carbon. Food. That's actually so interesting because, I mean, it's one of the things that a lot of travelers take into account now that they didn't previously, right? But as a company, how do you identify some of those factors in the decision making, not now, but 10 years down the line? Often based on the discussion, the key to understand what is, uh, what is moving our customers, what mm -hmm. our customers are really yeah. concerned about, what they see. And the moment that you pick up their concerns and really are in contact with them and, and discuss with them, okay, what they are, what they are uh, feeling, experiencing, mm -hmm. what their concerns are, yeah. then you can also, hey, we, I heard this before. Hey, I read something in the newspaper. Okay, let's let's try to work this out and have a discussion about it. Yeah. And what can we do? And, and it, it also starts with the pragmatic approach, maybe mm -hmm. also Dutch. What can we do? What can yeah. we actually do ourselves to do? Eh? We can say we are an airline. Yeah, we're not. Uh, that's not our league. Or we can think, yeah, maybe we could do something. And what can we do then? Very interesting. So taking a look at COVID then, right? Because obviously, you know, any airline was at the forefront of the effects of COVID. And so, you know, having having made um, sound long-term decisions as an airline in terms of your customers, 
all of a sudden something comes that hits the entire world like this, right? In the, in the, in the blink of an eye. How do you then adapt? And I guess in KLM's example, what's the toughest decision that you had to make uh, during the pandemic? Poof. Um, yeah, we had we had a qu quite a couple of tough decisions, but um, you know the, the 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 voice of the customer, so to say, or, or customer experience is always is, is 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 normally driving decisions to develop mm -hmm. uh, great products, services, interactions for our customers. Yeah. Um, the moment that you do not have customers, or when your customers, uh, you have to cancel. Um, uh, initially, we even had to cancel at a certain time uh, uh, 80 or 90 percent of our flights. Mm -hmm. So we had a huge number of customers coming to us. And you know, can you imagine that was on a certain day we had like 50,000 people banging on our door on one day, That's crazy. asking for a refund, asking for a rebooking, asking for and, and that was, I think, I found it very difficult at that time that we mm -hmm. could not always respond to the customer needs. Yeah. Uh, and that need was clarity, transparency. We did we did our best, yeah. but we were not able to do that. Um, yeah. Fortunately, uh, uh, we did well compared to some other companies who had the same uh, experience. Mm -hmm. And I, I, can, I, I truly also understand mm -hmm. the anger that, that, that sometimes there was, oh, yeah. because if you... Of if you if you're if you have a lower income, you bought tickets for your family for three thousand euros, and due to COVID, you you don't have income anymore, and 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 you gave three thousand euros to KLM, and you want that money back because you want to support your family, yeah. or take other decisions, go on another holiday that you need, and KLM does not give you your money back at that moment yeah, right that's... away, then. Yeah, I understand that you're kind of uh, agitated. So, I mean, that's that that's just forced you to to adapt in a way that, that you've never before had, right? And and I guess I guess internally, how does how do you react as a team? How do you, how does your tech stack react to it? Because all of a sudden, you know, that changes everything. The lack the lack of traffic on your websites, the lack of interaction. How does that impact your you know technology? How does that impact what you do on a day to day with your colleagues? In the beginning, it was very stressful. So we saw that that ma many. Um, People within our digital team that worked uh, day and night to, mm. to 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 cope. We had a number of volunteers. I think there were thousand volunteers initially. Really. Uh, uh, and we all equipped them with with a Salesforce license, uh, mm -hmm. temporary license to to also be able to uh, help customers. Mm -hmm. So people at home were helping customers, and uh, sometimes they started with you know, three, four a day, and then. In the end, they managed to help like 20 customers in a few yeah, hours yeah. with team meetings and, and in between shifts. So that that was that was great. But then after that, we also realized, okay, the way we did things were not maybe uh, they were effective at that moment. Mm -hmm. But we needed to to also change some of our major uh, processes, uh, right. the way we we organized around. What's them. the what's the biggest process that changed? One element is that that on volume you need to be able to scale up uh, in a better way and to right. to, to manage that. Uh, we saw that we had until now we had also quite some uh, difficulty in in really uh, facilitating the, the flexibility in rebooking, mm -hmm. uh, and we saw also some uh, issues on refunding, but yeah. also on communication. So on communication, we saw that. Maybe some of the elements that were not organized, maybe the way we we we, we should have organized them, yeah. uh, the pain came up in the crisis that we were not effectively reaching all our customers right. the way we, we should. Yeah, yeah. So I guess looking back at it, if there was one thing that you could have done differently, what would it be? Prepare, um, prepare at night. Uh, uh, make sure that you are ready for for uh, yeah what. Uh, Worst case scenario, right? <laughs> Worst case scenarios, and 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 it's difficult to test this scenario. But be be honest to yourself. How strong ha, ha, we say in, in the past there were a couple of customers who who, who needed a refund, and and what yeah. we had there was not maybe the best system. Yeah. But okay, it it was okay. Um, but yeah, I would really recommend companies to to really challenge themselves and say, okay, how okay is it? Should mm -hmm. we not do a kind of a a, a, a test, a feasibility test. Okay, is this is this really matching the needs of our customers? Yeah. And if we if we need to scale up, can we do it? So, Mark, let's uh, let's switch gears a little bit, and I want to kind of find out um, 
I want to find out about certifications, right? Now, I know that recently you got the uh, CCXP certification and you know, congratulations are, are in order. Um, but I'm really curious to, to pick your brain as well as you're one of our, you're one of our first guests that, um, that have that certification. And I want to understand um, your thoughts on it. So, you know, I think we, we very recently had a mark where we're like, there's over a thousand, a thousand uh, CCXP um, professionals now out there. Um, and I know there's recently been debate about, okay, what is the actual value of these certifications? So I'm curious to get your thoughts in terms of, um, I guess, what you were able to learn from CCXP and how you were able to adapt it into practice. Yeah, but what it helps, of course, is a standardization. So, you know, um, within our organization of, of uh, KLM customer experience, we said, okay, um, we, we have to have a certain minimum required level of knowledge mm -hmm. with regard to if you if you are a pilot you need to have a certification to fly an aircraft if you are a custom experience professional if you claim to be a custom experience professional mm -hmm. yeah you should also have that certification you should know what you um uh, you should have your basic knowledge in place and yeah. um Difficulty is that not everybody has the same level of experience. Eh? We also yeah. work with, with young people who have just started, and um, so. Um, but we said, okay, let's let's bring them to that same level at least, um, uh, provide it to them, and that will also allow us to, um, yeah, to become more mature on the different mm. disciplines uh, of the customer experience. Um, so um, you're saying it's, it's almost. So it's almost a um, a standard now at KLM uh, to be able to if if you want to work with in a in a CX uh, role you need to have the a specific cert certificate. Yeah, not for all roles. So we have uh, da data analysts, and we have uh, yeah. But I would say it would be uh, ideally the majority of your of your team has that certification, right. and you can also rely on the same level of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Uh, and um, yeah, we, we we standardize more. There, there was also this this I would say framing, but there was this perspective of customer yeah. experience as yeah, they they uh, these are the marketeers. They always know how the customer thinks. They claim and they also. Yeah. Yeah, but it, I think it's it's part of the profession of uh, we we deal a lot with with I deal a lot with digital and IT. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, the data shows us. What the customer thinks. So, mm -hmm. what what are you bringing in? Uh, kind of a customer experience. Yeah, what are yeah. you bringing in? And that's where we say uh, customer experience uh, is a profession. So we have our methodology. We have our mm -hmm. processes in place. So we have a service design process. A yeah. uh, how do you say that? Uh, our innovation process. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the triple diamond. We make use of data. We make use of. Uh, um, uh, certain uh, standard techniques yeah. in order to um, build use cases, build uh, value use cases, build business cases to drive innovation. Interesting. Any particular examples, Mark, that stand out to you where you were able to apply, you know, uh, a methodology that you learned from CCXP directly and, you know, have a uh, business impact straight away? Yeah, one of the, one of the examples, uh, and I would say CCXP, from CCXP, it, it is the standard in uh, the different disciplines that you have to take into account. One of the yeah. elements is that we are um, in, in strategy that you have to make the choices. Uh, what, mm -hmm. are, what game are you playing? Yeah. Which customers do you want to reach? Uh, one of the elements is that we said, okay, we have a lot of customer understanding, but how, how are we using um, uh, what we know of our customers? Yeah, yeah. Um, how do we uh, uh, measure this? Is this now, are we making... Uh, yeah, use of the right metrics, mm -hmm. um, uh, descriptive metrics, um, outcome metrics, but also predictive metrics. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, you, you it, it comes all together in, uh, I'm just naming a few of the elements. Yeah. It all comes together in a, um, not only a maturity, how mature are you in your profession, but also in, in your way of working. Mm -hmm. So if you constantly remind each other, okay, we have this standard, have you used the standard? Right. You all become better in what you're doing. So I've, yeah, 20 examples that have resulted in a better outcome, but could be any proposition, whether it's implementing um, a, a sustainable pro proposition to mm -hmm. improving uh, our catering product to um, yeah, launching a, a new uh, new class in our aircraft. Yeah. Uh, doesn't matter. Interesting. When it comes to hiring, 
for you know additional uh, colleagues and and getting new people into your team. Um, do you think that that helps differentiate people as well? If they have those certifications on their profiles. Opinions differ. I, I think uh, you, you can train everybody. You know, mm -hmm. you have to have the right um, um, yeah, skills. You have to have a uh, level of intelligence, and then yeah. you can you can train somebody. Um, it helps if you can think conceptually. So if you can, you know, put yourself a little bit uh, in, yeah, put yourself in the, in the shoes of the customer, think as a customer, right. but also. Um, it requires some imagination also to okay what 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 does this mean mm -hmm. um and how does it relate to the brand so right. we have certain we have certain brand promise if you have that brand promise um how does how would you then uh, look at this interaction mm -hmm. and if if somebody is able to answer that okay I, I don't think this is the right interaction that we're looking for because it does not match our brand promise or our co desired custom experience. Right, right. Um, and some people say, yeah, you know, it's it's, it's functional. Um, so, you know, this is what the customer wants. Why 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 do you think further? You know, uh, and then you, then you know it's not the right candidate. <laughs> I, right. I must say, I, I always have a couple of questions, but you know, you have to be able to climb that ladder. Mm -hmm. The, the stairs, uh, yeah, kind of yeah. the, the first the first two steps are maybe functional, but um, to really get to know the emotional needs. So essentially, what you're saying is, whilst accreditations and and uh, certifications like CCXP help, um, there's a certain element of having that as your foundation, but then looking at the actual company, so KLM as an example, and how you actually approach customer experience. So every company is different. In KLM's example, it's very much about personalizing those, um, exceeding those expectations and doing that in a very tailored way for each segment of customers, which you won't really learn from a certification as this just kind of gives you a playing, level playing field of what's happening out there, right? Yeah, it helps. And it, it's it, 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 like any any training, you know, it, you're being shown what are the important elements to look at it. Uh, mm -hmm. CCXP, Forrester, you see that uh, most of the, the customer experience companies are using the same disciplines or elements uh, yeah, yeah. as part of okay if you make sure that you push forward on these and these elements mm -hmm. you will become a great custom experience uh, department yeah but there's, uh, there's a lot to it uh, of course it's it's a model and uh, it takes you uh, maybe 30 40 percent of where you want to be and then the other interesting you have to do still yourself yeah. I, can't, I can't wait for a klm cx course Maybe I should I, sh I should uh, propose it as a new proposition. Because, um... <laughs> All right, Mike. So I think uh, with that in mind, we can jump into the quick fire five question round um, and wrap up the episode. So I'll ask you five questions. Answer as quickly as you can. First and foremost, um, what's the worst example of CX outside of your industry? Mostly, I think it's uh, in the banking world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, where I see that um, I've gone through a process uh, uh, the other day also uh, with my bank, and I don't take it personally, but they, they ask many questions, and it's <laughs> it's a lot of distrust. And I think I've been your customer for the last twenty years, mm -hmm. a lot of paperwork, uh, and, and maybe it's my bank, but uh, that that I think it's, it's it's there's still a lot to gain. What's the biggest challenge you ever had to overcome as a CX professional? Convincing. And uh, that the customer really has a, uh, a value is a constant struggle. I think it's not a struggle, okay, how can we do the 100 meters in the fastest way, but uh, yeah. how can we make sure that we do the, that we reach uh, the, the, the thousand kilometers altogether? Marathon. Not, not yeah, a sprint, it's, it's a marathon. marathon. <laughs> What's the one book you would recommend to the audience and why? It doesn't have to be CX related. Oh, okay, difficult, difficult. <laughs> now for CX, I would say outside in uh, for sure. Classic. Uh, I like, uh, I really, uh, I think it's a Bible. What's the one thing about your business that you're most excited about? Airline business is, is, is great because if you talk about journeys, um, it, it's the most exciting journey. It's not uh, the, the, the journey literally uh, the customer uh, takes, <laughs> but it's, um, I, I, com I compare it sometimes with what it not is. Eh? If, you, if you're working for an e-commerce company, it's uh, okay. I, I, you know, I put it in the basket. Mm -hmm. I go to checkout. Uh, and uh, I select the item, I put it in the basket, check yeah. out, and uh, I pay, and then it's over, you know? And then yeah. there's a lot of time, uh, reconsideration and retargeting, and then you have the same process. Airline has this online process, which is quite lengthy, but also the experience of offline. So you are on board, whether you call it really offline, but um, 
yeah, it's exciting. What's your favorite CX tool out there? Now, I came across a company the other day, and it is called Dynatrace. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a UK firm. I love it. I, I really love it. Uh, we're now looking at can we make a connection between Dynatrace and Salesforce to really... Mm -hmm. Um, when the customer comes, uh, we have a lot. We see that a lot of impact on the MPS due due to small service failures, yeah. and something goes wrong. And then, okay, if you can at that moment take action and really solve the problem, mm -hmm. I think you can create a wow. Uh, that may be a little bit creepy, but that you can follow the customer constantly in the in their journey in their digital yeah. journey, uh, and that you can respond to that acti uh, proactively. Um, so yeah, next to uh, next to uh, Salesforce, uh, Dynatrace is something that we are looking now uh, at uh, with great interest. Shout out Dynatrace! <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mike. So I think uh... this, this is a commercial for Dynatrace. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mike. So I think with that we can we can wrap wrap up. Um, thanks so much for joining the show. It's a real real pleasure to have you. And to everyone else, if you enjoyed this episode, uh, give us a follow on LinkedIn at CXL's Podcast for regular weekly content and episodes. Till next time, guys. Thanks.